In terms of the effects of photochemical smog, we can start off with nitrogen oxides, which consists of nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide we associate as a visual pollutant. It's what will often give you that characteristic brown haze that surrounds cities experiencing photochemical smog. Nitrogen oxides can also result in eye irritation. So what happens is that um, things like nitrogen ox uh, dioxide can react with water or moisture to produce acids. Um, this is something that you've probably seen before. So nitrogen dioxide reacting with water to produce two different acids, HNO2 being nitrous acid and HNO3 being nitric acid. Nitric acid is the stronger acid, so this is the acid that's going to produce uh, the more irritation to your eyes um, as it's reacting with the moisture in your eyes. Ozone, on the other hand, uh, has a number of impacts. Firstly, in terms of humans, uh, we can say it's a respiratory irritant. It actually damages the tissue lining of your lungs, in particular for the elderly, the young, and those prone to asthma and bronchitis can be put at a much higher risk. It can also have long-term impacts on plant growth because we know that ozone can actually limit gas exchange in leaves. It can also affect photosynthesis and other cellular processes. And it also means that plants are more susceptible to disease and weather extremes. So they're definitely not going to be able to cope as well in the presence of ozone. Uh, this image here shows you uh, an example of what can happen to plant leaves. Um, so you can see this somewhat blackening um, and these spots of black on leaves where it's, it's actually attacking the plant and it's affecting its ability to carry out photosynthesis where it's needed for plant growth. Uh, another effect of ozone is that it can actually attack plastics and other polymers like rubber. Um, ozone itself is a good oxidizing agent and so it's going to actually attack some of the bonds within these uh, so-called polymers or plastics and therefore weaken the polymer itself. This image here is just trying to show you a car tire and looking at the effects of ozone and how it can actually cause some cracking within the uh, rubber itself. Um, so when that happens it's likely that you're going to need to get your tires replaced. Um, because they're going to be much, much more brittle. The last science understanding is uh, to be able to describe and write equations showing how catalytic converters reduce the quantities of nitrogen oxides generated by motor vehicles. Obviously, we've got some issues when it comes to uh, photochemical smog and the primary and secondary pollutants. Catalytic converters aim to help reduce the uh, concentration of some of these pollutants. So it can convert some of these precursors of photochemical smog to less harmful pollutants. Catalytic converters are fitted to all modern vehicles um, and they, they are fitted to the exhaust pipes of all these vehicles. We say that they're made up of an open porous matrix coated with some uh, type of precious metal, um, so namely platinum, palladium uh, and or erodium uh, metal which act as catalysts um, to help speed up these conversions. In terms of this diagram we can see where it's positioned relative to the vehicle so we've got the combustion engine here, we've got the tailpipe here and then we've got the catalytic converter. This section here shows you what we mean by this open porous um, what we call matrix um, it's essentially allowing for a, an extremely large surface area where reactant particles, so some of those um, primary pollutants like nitric oxide, can make contact with these precious metals and they, the reactions that convert them into less harmful um, products can actually be catalyzed. So we've got pollutant gases here being converted into perhaps less harmful uh, exhausts and therefore reducing the likelihood of photochemical smog. This diagram shows you uh, what we classify as a uh, three-way catalytic converter. Well, we call it a three-way catalytic converter because it helps convert 
three different um, pollutants, namely carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, and unburnt hydrocarbons into less harmful byproducts. So we've got in this diagram uh, unburnt hydrocarbons represented here, carbon monoxide as one of the uh, uh, primary pollutants, and then NOx, uh, which represent the different nitrogen oxides, nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. So the exhausts get passed through into this three-way catalytic converter. We still get these reactions taking place. So carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, which we know is associated with uh, the enhanced greenhouse effect and, and climate change. We've got, uh, in this case, uh, unburnt hydrocarbons reacting with oxygen producing water and carbon dioxide. You've got uh, nitrogen oxides reacting with carbon monoxide to produce less harmful carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas. This shows you some of the materials that we might actually use um, in the making of these catalytic converters. And uh, once it passes through the catalytic converter, we get the emission of less harmful water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen gas. So we know carbon monoxide and unburnt hydrocarbons are products of incomplete combustion. So when they aren't uh, burned cleanly to simply produce carbon dioxide. So we want to assist in this process. Um, what we can see in these equations that carbon monoxide does get oxidized to carbon dioxide. So you're going to allow for this further reaction to take place. Unburnt hydrocarbons also get oxidized, um, so they get converted into CO2 and, and water. And perhaps the more important one uh, for you guys, nitric oxide uh, can be reduced by carbon monoxide. This actually has a twofold uh, benefit because carbon monoxide is actually a poison for our respiratory system, and we know nitric oxide uh, can result in photochemical smog. So we get uh, NO reacting with CO, it then producing N2 and CO2. So that's the end of 1.2 photochemical smog. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.